a profitable stylist this week. We talking about how to color hair extensions. Are hair extensions already colored? Are they yes. already colored? Whoa. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Already it's a colored? twist. <laughs> that's, that, I, that's the question I always get. Can I, can I color these hair extensions? And then when they say color, you can't go, when I say they, I mean hairdressers in general. You know what? Clients too. But can I color the hair extensions? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Because I wanted to make these black ones blonde. <laughs> Is that a choice? You know, <laughs> so it's a little tricky. You got to be careful with the words people use. What do they really mean when they ask the question? It's so common for me now when somebody asks any question, even my little mm -hmm. nine-year-old, what do you mean by that? You know, it's yeah, like, what do you mean by that? What do you <laughs> explain your question just a little bit more? Do you really mean what you're asking? Because most of the time, no. People mean something totally different one that, than what they're asking because they sometimes have a mission also. They're trying to figure something out and they're kind of testing you. And so you can't just say yes or no anymore. You can't just say yes or no. Right? Well, e oh, extensions okay. are colored. <laughs> That's right. They are That's colored. why we have an entire swatch ring that we've done videos on that has, you know, 180 or 190 different colors because each one of those are a different color. Well, wait. There actually have been colored in any definition that you might be thinking also. They've all actually been bleached also. So, so all right. Then we got to go through the whole entire. Yeah. All right. Yes. So he, well, here's, the, here's the thing. Like let's people. Do the quick answer. Mm. For the people who don't want to stay for the whole time. Let's do the quick answer. Can hair extensions be colored? probably, usually, most of the time, higher end extensions are going to be a higher quality so they can take a little bit more chemical, God, I hate to word, use the word damage, but I guess all things done to hair are slightly to greatly damaging oh. on, on a level. And so, yeah. you can color down, but if you try to lighten hair extensions, it's going to be a very slippery slope. That's going to be tricky. So that's the that's the short answer. Yeah, is usually you can darken, deposit, make it a little. When you go down, when he says down on the right, or I mean deposit, you can deposit darker than the level of the extension you're working currently with. Right. You can try to go lighter by bleaching it, but you're running a heavy risk of inconsistent results. Thank you for watching. We're done. <laughs> Well, let's go into detail for the no, nerds I'm, I'm, I'm messy. Yeah, no, 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 I know. But and it has to be human now. hair. You cannot have synthetic. You cannot have, like, even the some of the animal hairs is, is a pain of the butt. But but it, it, um, we're talking about human hair, specifically 100% Remy human hair. That's right. And uh, so let's go into detail now of where hair starts, how it's uh, gotten to where it's gotten, and why it can sometimes take some chemical damage or chemical processing, which could possibly be damaging, depending on what you're doing. And, I mean, we, it's almost like you got to have a tiny bit of basic color knowledge here. And I don't want to assume, we were just talking about color before we got on here. I don't want to assume everybody understands color completely. So without going into great detail, let's go into a tiny bit of basics. Uh, some people just call color, color. They call everything that changes a person's color because because when you're coloring on a sheet of paper you can go darker or you can go lighter you know so some people think if they took your hair and made it my color that would just be color but that would be lightning or bleaching or lifting or so many words for going the lighter direction and then there's the darker direction they're not both called color by professionals although kind of quickly some professionals do say color when they mean lighten so you get we gotta we gotta kind of talk about that. So hair originally has gotten from somewhere in the world. Every company's different, you know. The the search and the challenges to try to get the higher quality hair yeah. that has not been that's what virgin hair is all about. Virgin, hundred percent human Remy hair. Let's define all of those words to start with. Which one would you like to take? I take the easy one. I'll take Remy. <laughs> okay <laughs> Which, you'd be surprised a lot of people can't answer like just for fun 
in oh, a class, I'll always throw it out there. Can somebody explain to me what Remy hair is? And then everybody yeah. will start looking around at each other and they'll be like, uh, Those yeah, <laughs> You're right. It's hair. I'm like, yes. Well, what type of hair? You know? Right. So, right. And I didn't, I didn't always know. So I don't blame people for not knowing. I think it's funny. Like you said, in classes, when you say Remy hair, what is right? Who knows what Remy hair is? I used to do this probe when I did talks at schools and there was 50 to 100 or 200 people in a school and most of them did not know. Rarely did anyone know. And it was it was usually one black girl in the group that wears extensions, the whole family wears extensions and all her friends have extensions and they they're buying packs of Remy hair. None of the white girls knew what Remy hair was. They just didn't know. They're not in the extension world usually. But Remy hair, most people, even then when I started probing in salons, hairdressers, licensed, have very few knew what it meant. But the, the, my favorite was the wrong answer. They're like, oh, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's virgin hair or it's good hair. Well, that's, that's the best hair. But, but that's the thing. Everybody knows it's good. They just don't know that's why right. it's good. Right. So stop. All right. So Remy hair means all the cuticle. All the, the, the hair shaft, all the cuticles, all going in the same direction. It's all laying on top of each other in the, in the same direction. Why would it not be in the same direction? So that's a great question, and that's usually a follow-up question that, that I get all the time. <clears throat> With modern technology now and the way they do things, there's a, there's a couple of ways what, how it happens. Sometimes companies will take a whole mess of hair from all different places. They won't organize it nicely. They'll just throw it all into a vat. And by the time they pull it all out, the hairs have crisscrossed each other and now they're going opposite directions. And that's what causes non Remy hair to happen. And then usually what they'll do is they'll put some kind of a coating, some kind of a silky smooth coating over it to, to make it feel better. But the no, problem, what no. happens is if, if that coating wears off due to natural wear and tear, blow drying, styling, heat, washing, life, you got instant frizz. And that's a hot mess. So there's some other processes that happen here. So, yeah, I guess, you know, we see hair as uh, a flat, smooth surface, but under a microscope, it is it is rough. And it looks, uh, I mean, the best, the closest we can describe, and it's not exactly, it's like scales on a fish. Mm -hmm. You know, the fish, if you rub a fish from uh, mouth to tail, it's kind of smooth. A fish that has scales, not like a catfish that just has skin. But if you rub the side of a, a perch, a brim, or a fish with scales, it feels smooth one way. But if you rub the other way, it'll kind of grab you because those scales lay on top of each other. And that's kind of how hair is, only rounded. And so those, uh, those cuticle layer kind of lay over each other and... If you've got one upside down and one right side up, those those scales will grab. So you know what you might not be as familiar with because you didn't you didn't grow up in the hair replacement world. So in the hair replacement world, a very common practice to try to it was interesting and it's not a terrible idea. They chemically burn the cuticle off. They will uh, they will mm. they will over process it with acids to remove the cuticle from the hair. So then it didn't matter which way the hair went and the cuticle wouldn't grab and you never get 100% of it off. So it still tangles a little bit, but you don't have as much cuticle grabbing each other. And what a great idea in theory. But the problem with that was that's what help, has helps. I'm getting my tongue. I'm getting all tongue tied. That's what provides elasticity to the hair. So there's no more stretch. So it breaks easier. But it's also what protects and holds the color in so now it fades faster mm. but that is something that's out there that people will say well this hair doesn't tangle it might have burned off cuticle also so that so, in hair extensions we see that more often in some of the lower end qualities right. of hair lower end brands look if you can order online 200 pieces of hair extensions for 50 bucks <laughs> Yeah, that's got <laughs> plastic bonds on it. That's not even glue. It's not even resin. Forget about keratin. There's no way there's any protein in there whatsoever. Yeah, and right. that hair, I don't know. They, they, that, that hair, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> well, so that's, that's a good point. So that sentence I said earlier, we're kind of unpacking that whole sentence. One was the origin of hair. Where did the hair come from? 
And I'm not, we don't want to go into a ton of detail, but here comes from a few really high end areas, or I say high end, high end hair comes from a few specific areas. One being um, uh, Indian Remy, uh, Indian temples where they're shaving their hair and presenting it to the church. Some people, there's been a rumor lately that that's a bad thing because people think that those people are getting, I know, I got a couple of emails, I don't want uh, temple hair. And I said, why? And they're like, because they take advantage of their their uh, their members. And it's like, no, they're not. Oh, shoot, I kicked my screen again. They're not taking advantage of their members. It, in their practice for thousands of years that taking the hair off their head is a cleansing ritual. They are getting closer to their deity and getting getting relieved of their sins and doing some kind of new start kind of thing. It's a ritual to do a new start, a cleansing, forgiven their sins, taking off all their hair. And then thousands of years ago, what, they probably just threw the hair away or burned it or no, they sacrificed. used it for other stuff. They probably used it they, back they then. Made rope, actually, they made rope out of it. Right, rope, pillows, uh, cushions, stuffing for stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. right, so... The church has always probably tried to be resourceful and not wasted, is what I say. So it's a poorer country. The people are not, the church is not buying the hair. So the people can't give money to support the church. And if you're going to go to a church, you want that church to continue to be around for you to go to next week and next year. So the church sells the hair yeah. to a country like us and other, uh, you know, first world countries that want to use the hair to make our hair longer, thicker, whatever, and we don't have those same rituals. So that's one area. But there's other places where high-end hair has gotten. But the thing that makes it high-end hair is people that grow their hair long and don't color it or chemically process it. But the rest of the world is starting to do some chemical processes. They want to change the curl of their hair, change the color of their hair. And so the to start with, the best hair starts off as virgin hair so that the company can then change the color of the hair but if the hair's already been chemically processed we have no idea how good a condition that's in how many times that client's colored it so that's when the quality starts to drop some companies will use that hair and then even in the good companies that use great hair some of the shedding around the office just around the the factory ends up on the floor they sweep that hair up they don't just throw it away they resell it to low-end companies that are just getting started you right you you want a curveball what? I got asked this question in a class once and I thought it was really awesome. The the, the creative imagination of students is 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 awesome. Uh is there is there really such a thing as virgin hair? Why is that? Well, if we're always talking about environmental factors and blow drying and flat ironing and heat sources and blah blah blah, then isn't everybody's hair burned and everybody's natural pigment gets lightened up somehow anyways? Well, so Yes, to a certain degree, to a certain degree. But hey, some, it was a but, very creative idea. It was a very creative well, question. Yeah, but if you go to India, where, and I don't have the correct terminology, but you don't even see their hair because their clothing covers their head, that is probably the best hair on the planet. That hair is protected from the sun. They're probably not blow drying their hair because it's just going to air dry naturally at night when they sleep. They're going to cover it during the day. They're doing no colors or chemicals. Yeah, they got the but, oils right. that they use for conditioning and stuff. And then some areas, sure. There's just a poor area where they're just selling their hair for a very little bit of money. But let's get let's go on to the next next topic. Um, uh, the origin of hair, hum, 100% human, Remy. So the 100% human. You touched on that a little bit about plastics, and I know you. I know you're talking about the the, the bond that holds it in, but. The actual strands of hair uh, can be strings of plastic, synthetic hair. There's there's fancy names for it, Kanekalon, Tupalon, and a bunch of other cyber hair, a bunch of names for it. Mm -hmm. But inevitably, it's uh, it's either, uh, oh goodness, there's a few different, nylon or uh, some sort of version of plastic. And some plastics, like, give you an example, uh, some strings of plastic can only take up to like 200 degrees heat or right. some less. And then you got... One of the places I learned that some plastics can take more is I was re restyling a, a a wig, a synthetic wig, and I learned that oh steam, I can change the curl and the take the frizz out with steam. So I'm using a steamer and a round brush and I'm redesigning. Then I'm at home and after a, a after one of my paint brushes has gone gone a little frizzy, I thought you know probably fix this paint brush like I do a wig, and I could not. 
Mm. So that's mm. when I learned that one of the companies out there has cyber hair. And they said, if that hair goes frizzy or you need to curl it, you can't do it with steam. And I thought it's synthetic. Why would I not be able to? It's nylon. Paintbrush bristles are nylon. It takes a much higher heat. So that gave me a little bit of a clue into how uh, high heat synthetic fiber works. It's more along the nylon uh, rather than, and I don't know what the tupelon and canicolon and all the, what, what synthetic fiber it is, but it's a lower heat plastic that melts easier. So the higher heat fabrics, the higher heat uh, uh, synthetics, they do perform a lot better, but still they don't have the stretch, the color fades, they will melt when you put a flat iron or curling iron on it. But some companies will mix some synthetic hair in with the human hair, still call it human, because there are no government regulations that are putting people in jail for lying about whether they have human or synthetic. It's a shame, but in our industry, you can buy hair at a local beauty supply and it says 100% human Remy hair. It doesn't have to be any of those. But mm -hmm. the fact that it says it's Remy doesn't mean it's a what it doesn't mean it came from the right people group because different races have different size hair. And so what we try to do is get uh, a, a European Indian type of hair because of the size of the hair fits most Americans in this country. Whereas an American Indian's hair is much bigger. Uh, Chinese hair is a larger fiber. And so if you're using Chinese hair and you're trying to use it as a, it could be Remy, but it might be too large of a, of a, of a fiber. And so same thing with synthetic, it's a larger fiber than human, no matter what synthetic fiber it is. So there's just so many little nuances that all you can really know is I can't color synthetic because it's plastic. Right. So when you say can I color hair, not if it's synthetic. You know and what? They I, used to, I started split. on uh, horsetail and yakky. Interesting. OK. So when I first started doing extensions, that was my first experience with the hair. Uh, and, that, and that's animal hair. And they're big. Oh, and that's yeah. big, big fibers. They do not it's bend. Always it's hard happen. to bend those. Yeah. And I mean, if you're doing all, like if you're doing dreads or, or braids, then synthetic or low-end hair is fine because you're controlling a big group of hair. You're putting it in a bunch of braids and it's not two big old hunks of braid or dreads aren't going to tangle on each other very well or, or very bad. So sometimes low-end hair is worth getting for the project. Why buy expensive hair? I just got a, a consultation uh, text this morning. Uh, a girl's wanting extensions, and uh, I asked her what she's looking for. She says, well, I have hair down to the middle of my back, and it's very thick. That's the first sentence. And I thought, where are we going with this? And then she sends me an inspiration picture, and it's just got pinks and purples and blues mixed in with. So she just she's just looking for some fantasy colors. Well, now it's like if she wants fantasy colors, maybe it has to be high end. But then if she wants them just in the braids that I saw in the picture, well, heck, we could do synthetic hair. Mm -hmm. You can put synthetic fibers in the braids. It's not gonna, it's not gonna matter how good a quality the hair is. So there's always a, a quality for the application kind of thing. So 100% uh, origin human Remy hair. I think we covered a lot of that. Yeah. But staying on, staying on the color subject. All hair, whether it started off colored or was virgin hair, ends up getting lightened a little to a lot and then colored. What do they bleach it and what do they color it with? Do they do it the same as in a salon? So, no. It, it, and then that's a great point to bring up. It goes through a heavy, intense decolorization process. And a lot of these hair extension companies, they have to do two things, actually. They have to sanitize because hairs come, human hair is coming from all over the world. Right. So That's they have right. to first, they have to sanitize that hair and decontaminate that hair to whatever level they have to do it to. That's already going to start beating up on the cuticle and the, and the integrity of that quality of hair to begin with. Then they Good have point. to decolorize all of that hair. Decolorize. What a fancy word. Well, and, and that, and that's the difference because stripping hair is only removing surface color. And, and bleaching hair is only lightening and lifting existing color. So language, the language starts getting complex real fast. <laughs> right, right. And you're more of a colorist than I am. Yeah. I just know that 
lighten and, and recolor. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so the decolorization process is literally removing all pigment from the, so you can have that black or you can have a medium brown or, or or a dishwater blonde it doesn't matter what they are you're removing completely all that color and now they got to go back and add that dye back in well regular hair color that we use in the salon is protein based and it and it and it attaches to the natural proteins in our hair so it's kind of like a magnet they connect to each other but if the hair has gone through that heavy decolorization process, it's got nothing to grab onto. So they actually are staining the hair with textile dye. And the textile mm -hmm. dye is the same dye that they use to color our clothes with. It's why you yeah. can wash your clothes 20, 30, 40, 50 times and, 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 and the color doesn't fade out straight away when you wash it every time, you know? Right. And so what happens is after they stain that hair after they st uh, color the hair by staining it with the with the textile dye then they're putting a very heavy duty clear coat which you don't believe in zero stroke zero zero <laughs> i had to get that in there <laughs> but then they put a heavy silky smooth or a heavy coating or a seal they put something over all of that because like i said that color had nothing to attach to because they've removed all the natural out. So now they got to lock all of that in. And now they send that to us. And our lighteners and bleaches that we use at a professional level are nowhere near as strong or potent enough to break through that. Anybody that's ever been in the salon that's gotten bleach on their clothes, especially if you're wearing black, turns orange or it turns some weird neon -y color and it doesn't matter right. how many times you take a sharpie to it it always turns into some weird mud brown it never goes back to the to the black color like like the fabric originally was so let me reveal a tiny bit of uh i'm sure it's not as much a secret as i'm making it sound like not every company does it the same they don't tell us exactly how they do it and so you might hear some uncertainty in our voice because We've dealt with a lot of extension companies, and some will tell everything about a subject, but then they've got secrets about parts of it. And then another company will tell us the truth about one part, we think, and then secrets about the other. So we've kind of put all this together over the years of what probably happens, how, kind of how it happens in general. And high-end companies, low-end companies are doing it differently. And and so the, that, the reason I kind of preface with that is I was going to ask you a question. You kind of made it sound like they bleach or lift all hair before they color it. But do you think they do with the darker hair? Do you think they, uh, cause that's a, let's start with that point. Most people in the world where the hair is coming from has have darker hair. So in general on the coloring from black to blonde, the darker colors are usually a little healthier, uh, less tangly because they've been processed less in my understanding and opinion because they don't lift them as much before they tone them and the very dark ones they might not lift at all they might just tone darker would would you agree with that i th th that's a great question i understand your point but i don't agree with that only because if i put the same formula on 10 people i'm gonna get 10 different results and mm -hmm. although we will say you know, you're a natural level, you know, six or seven, I'm a natural level one or two. Um, we're just categorizing everybody within that level, but the, but, but hair color is the level, but also the tonal value of that level. Some people are ashy. Some people are warm. Some people are neutral or natural or however you want to say it. Right. So for consistency sake, cause they, a company is displaying to you a swatch ring. And they're saying right. that this color is guaranteed to match this swatch plus or minus half a level. And, and that's another misnomer that a lot of people think like the color is always going to match the swatch 100% exactly. It's human hair. And from batch to batch, it's always going to be plus or minus a half a level. Oh. It's never going to hit right. exactly because that swatch so was created on that one time that one batch was made. Do you think they lift it all to a certain level and then color it all the different For colors? For consistency sake. Now, for consistency's yeah, I mean, sake for practicability that does make sense You're so then because right. also you got to think about this in general in general hair extensions usually tend to run on a warmer tone 
True. Not all companies have ashy colors or flat tone colors. Mm. And and that is subject to the coloring process. You're oh you always have to add back in some combination of primary pigmentation to create that foundational base for the color to build off of. And that's always going to come out in some kind of warm, warm tone. Interesting. Especially when you're toning over pre-lightened, you're right. always going to end up with a semi-warm result. The name of the game when we're, especially when we're toning, you know, and you see it more in blonde and in lighter hair than you do in darker hair. But whenever you go to high, or whenever you go to tone after a highlight or, or after a bleaching or whatever you're doing, a double process, yeah, you could get them platinum blonde and yeah, you can get them white and everything. But then after two, three, four washes, you start to see that warmth start to show through again, right? It's, it's, that's always trying to cover up the warmth. It's always going to pull because you're starting off from blue at a dark. You're starting off at red at a brown. You're ending up with yellow at a, at a light at a blonde and yellow is the nat is the smallest of the three primary pigments. And it's the biggest pain of the butt to get out because it's the smallest molecule. There's so much of it left over in there. So yeah, I, 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 in my opinion, I don't know this for fact, but in right. my opinion for consistency's sake, they are decolorizing everything when they get it. All the way to a gold, you don't think? Uh, to, to whatever they're doing. Yeah, well, because you're talking about the uh, the un, the brassy orangey reddish underlying tones so with you saying all that it kind of makes me think they probably lighten it to two or three uh level two or three different specific levels for all the colors and they probably lighten in a big batch to somewhere in the middle and then they're probably grabbing all that hair and pulling out the ones that got a little bit lighter because they might go more with it the ones that didn't go as light because they're going to go darker with it and so, kind of subdividing it but like, and we've seen some of these processes in factories before. And you know what? All I've ever seen is it very, very light in big, big vats, and it's all and it, and it smells smells like bleach. It smells like bleach. I yeah. mean, it there's some. I guess all things that lighten hair smell like bleach, no matter what you want to call it. You know, and so you might be right. They might all go blonde before they color them because then from there I was seeing purple come out. I was seeing all kind of different shades and some fantasy colors, browns and, and purples were the colors they were doing that day. So you might be right. It might all turn golden. So even the color they're putting in there, even if it's a medium to dark brown and it fades, it's going to fade to that orangey brassy. So let's talk about this now. So a lot of people want to color hair lighter <laughs> and they say can i color it and i'm always careful to ask what color were you hoping to color it and when they name a color lighter i'll say because even my office staff who are not trained uh licensed cosmetologists will have to answer these questions sometimes and i always tell them be careful how you answer that question make sure you mention you can most likely probably easily go a little to a lot darker but rarely can you lighten it. And I would recommend not trying it at all, but you might be able to just knock the edge off with a little bit of a, like a light bleach shampoo type of bath if you need to, but I wouldn't recommend it. Just order lighter hair. So let's talk about, let's talk about lightening it. Why can you not lighten extensions and you can darken them? Okay. It, that, that, that barrier that's crucial. So first of all, the no no okay the barrier that's created to seal in that textile dye to to our eyes we don't see it but if you were to put it under a microscope it's a pretty thick barrier it has to lock that color in and it's got to give that reflective shine when light hits it that's why hair extensions always look so nice and shiny so first you got to break through that barrier well that takes time and that can okay. take anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes just to get through that first layer. Then you've got, you've, now you've hit the color, the textile dye. And I have to keep saying that because it is not normal hair color. Right. And breaking through, okay, so coloring regular hair color can take anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. Right. On average. I'm just saying average. 
Right. A textile dye can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Or or days. It's good. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. little side note real quick. The big difference in why extensions can be changed in color so much and still be healthy is they're not limited by time constraints. Yeah. They can take hours and hours to slowly and much more healthily just slowly remove the color. And the faster you go, the more damaging in, in both directions. But if you can take hours to remove color, and then if you can put color in, even if it's staining, slowly and let it air dry over days or in warming rooms, you just can't do that on a real person. That's why it's not practical in the salon. People have to get home to their kids and their husbands and, and, and dinner. But yeah. hair that's just sitting around in a factory has time if the company wants to do it right. So that's just a little side note of why um, hair can be healthily lifted and, and, and uh, deposited upon over lots and lots of time. So I like what you're saying about the busting through with the bleach. That's yeah, one of the and, and a bleach <laughs> and a lightener is only active as long as the moisture in that product can can remain, you know, as over time. Yeah, because every five minutes, or, you know, every three to five minutes, you start losing a level of moisture. So your product starts drying out. And the more it dries out, the less potent it gets. Well, if you need 20, 30 minutes just to get through the first layer, and then you need another half hour, an hour to get through the second layer, you know, just to do anything, how are you going to keep your lightener active or how are you going to keep your bleach active for an hour and a half to two hours uh, and most people don't sit there and babysit the product. They don't sit right. there with oil or with water or with some kind of additive to, to, to keep, you know, reactivating that lightener. You know, they just slap it on there. They throw them under a dryer, which is the worst thing you can do. And then it dries it out even more. Well, forget about it. I'm going to go on a tangent, but you know, most people <laughs> don't babysit. Cap. <laughs> <laughs> Say again, a plastic cap, a, pl a plastic cap. <laughs> I purposely went to the dollar store and bought scuba gear. And just to prove a point, when you put the plastic cap on there, it seals. It creates a vacuum seal and there's no return air coming back in for fresh. So then people punch holes in it to let the steam out. Uh -oh. But there oh no, there's no fresh return air coming back in. So I went and bought a snorkel thing from the dollar store just to just to prove a point that, you know, how are you breathing? <laughs> there, there's no breathing going on in there. So just have them put the plastic cap all the way down to here. You know? <laughs> that would I'm, prove the point too. I, I would love to on some clients, but uh, no, <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> you do it on the hairdressers to show them. Let me show you why you can't put a plastic cap over bleach and then put it over their mouth and nose. And oh and yeah. Up. Well, <laughs> I, I'd like to do that to some people too, but no, you can do like that. <laughs> so that's a good point. Um, you possibly could, bleach hair extensions or, or lighten uh, or tone in a, in a, in a, in a going up direction, but it would take so much time. It's, it's unpractical. The other thing is very inconsistent because you don't know what level they had lifted it to before they did, they put the color on there. So you, and textile dyes don't react the same as we're used to working with. You know, we are used to working with bleaching. Oh, we already say that, uh, color doesn't lift color so you have to use bleach to lift color and then we still don't love doing it we don't like taking somebody from fantasy fantasy colors or black it, that are humans with color we don't like taking them from dark to lighter so why would we want to do it on extensions or textile dyes? and there's one and then then, then there is one other thing that a lot of people don't think about when we're lifting when we're lightening we go through the contributing pigments we go through the levels of lift right there seven and seven. and so yeah you start from from darkest brown to red brown to red red orange orange yellow orange yellow gold palest yellow you know you go through all of that because you have those three primary pigments red yellow and blue in the hair so you're mm -hmm. naturally progressing through those stages of lightning and lift but in a textile dye that doesn't exist also contrary to belief hair extensions still have porosity because they still have a cuticle on them. 
Right. So and the, and the cortex was never destroyed. Only if anything, the cuticle gets removed. So hair extensions still have a, a layer of porosity to them as well. And when we're trying to break through that textile dye, you just like natural hair. If 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 a, if a woman has a hair down to halfway down her chest, you know, and and the bottom half might lighten one way, the mid shaft might lighten something else, the the the, the new growth point. might lighten something else. Hair extension is going to do the same thing. There's no guarantee just because you did everything perfect and, and you got a consistent application. There's still no guarantee that you're going to lighten evenly all the way through. And there is That's no um, there, there's no contributing pigment to guesswork on how that's going to lift. So you might get a band that does nothing. You might get a band that turns white and you get it might get a band that turns into, I mean, spin the wheel and 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 pick what it falls on you know you pl you playing it's such a is such a great point because you're talking about bands but the hair is also uh randomly selected from multiple donors and so yeah. the bands aren't all in the same area on extension so one person's hair well, the depending on the length too if you're dealing with shorter hair you don't know if that came from the ends of a person's head mm -hmm. or the or the top half of a person's head might be the bottom of one person's head the top of another they were put together to make that 10 inch hair and so now your bands aren't all going to be it's not going to be a nice even band that you can go back in and re-bleach the, the dark bands man i never even thought in that that much detail and depth about about uh coloring extensions you're right. The ends are. It's been a lot of pain. I've gone through a lot of pain and a lot of suffering and a lot of mistakes. <laughs> just haven't. I did it once or twice with without success and just steered away from it. I'd rather mix two or three colors together to get the color I want. I'd just wait and order the right color or order lighter and color it darker. I made a few mistakes in the beginning. I'm not a colorist, so I wasn't even gonna. I wasn't even gonna act like I knew better than the color world of extensions. I just ordered the right color. But I imagine as a colorist, you just kept trying. You just knew you could get it, right? <laughs> well, you know, you, you order four or $500 of hair, and then you're like, okay, I got this, I got this, I got this. Uh, oh, I need to order another $400. <laughs> I got this, I got this, I got this. Yeah. I need to Good order point. another 500 I feel like the Wiley e. Coyote, you know, every plan I make just explodes. Nothing works. You'd have been better off saying, can I return? You would have had a better chance of returning the hair. <laughs> and, and before you colored it and got the right color instead of trying because once you color it is definitely not returnable i know most companies don't like to take hair back but honestly you we send the hair out to you you get it and you're like oh no i'm way off you don't unpack it you didn't unwrap it you didn't touch it with your dirty hands you will probably take it back and some companies might charge a 10 percent restocking fee that's still way cheaper and screwing it all up and then having to reorder another four or five hundred dollars. We, we are creative animals and, and we think we can do it and get it done. And, uh, and <laughs> is there anything we didn't cover? I, yeah, I mean, we have to talk about that. depositing. So we have to talk about coloring. Okay. So, so the Let's actual, okay. So you can't go lighter. You can't go lifting. Okay, fine. There is this thing, what I refer to uh, of as horizontal movement within the same level. Okay. So what that means yep. is color doesn't lift color. Yes, I agree. That's a general rule. In certain scenario, and this is extremely situational, in certain levels, if you're just trying to stay within the same level or you're just trying to go up or down a half a level, you can change the tonal value of it. Interesting. So okay. for the longest time, we used to take, you know, 1001, which is a, a particular shade of color from the she hair extensions. And we used to tone the mess out of it and we used to make it platinum or make it lighter or make it butter or make it, you know, what ashy, you know, like we would make some variation of that before they started coming out with other colors that now we don't have to do that, you know. Um, so you, you can move within the same level and you can tone anything you want. And and when you're going darker, most people think they're going to start from a blonde and then they're just going to go down to whatever level they want to be and whatever tonal value they want to be. But right. it is way easier to start with something close to what you want because the less levels you need to deposit, the more retention you will have before that color fades out. Okay. What we forget 
is when we are depositing permanent hair color on human hair, on, on a person. <laughs> You're articulating those syllables, huh? I, because because, because it's, I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got like the in office on the syllable. <laughs> Well, because my accent sometimes gets in the way and you make fun of me. You know? Go ahead. <laughs> no. Well, what happens is, though, you know, that color mixes in and combines with the other color and they all anchor into each other and, and you're done. So that's easy enough. But on hair extensions, again, you got those barrier on the outer seal and then you got the textile dye. You're never going to break through that textile dye and you're never going to replace that textile dye. Permanent color diffuses and re and removes natural melanin to make room for artificial pigment. That's the purpose of permanent hair color. Well, in a textile dye, there is no way in this God's green earth you're removing or diffusing or making any room of any kind. You're not breaking through that textile dye. So all you're doing is putting a layer on top of a layer. That's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this happens a lot. How many times have have you and I been at a hair show and backstage, I go to color the hair extensions. I give it to one of our guest artists who's at the show with us. They run a flat iron or a curling iron through, and then they turn around and go, oh, hey, Bernard, uh, what's wrong with this Don't. hair? You literally burn it off. You burn yeah. off that layer of color that I just put on, and you've brought me hair extensions back 20,000 times and said, uh, yeah, he didn't know the difference or she didn't know the difference, and I got to go back and recolor, and I'm cussing because now I'm behind, and it's a hot mess, you know? That's but but that that's the reason why you want to start off with one or two levels as close as possible to what you want because you're never going to get a full penetration. Right. When you go to color the extensions, I don't care if it's a weft or a bond, whatever it is, you got to clip that down and you got to jam that brush in there. You really got to work that through <laughs> because... There is surface saturation when you're applying hair color, and then there's penetration when you're applying hair color. So would you recommend clar clarifying or uh, a bleach bath before to break through any surfaces? Before yeah, you, do you can do all of those things, you know, given the time constraints and given your willingness to do what you need to do. You know, so right. many times, look, the, the reality is this. In a perfect world, I would order the extensions a week before the client came in and I would have a, I would have three days to start putzing around. You know, the first day I'd wash the hell out of it and let it soak in some dish soap and, right. and, and just really dissolve whatever I can off of it the next day. And then I'd let it air dry overnight. The next day I would bleach the mess out of it and I'd let it sit in a bleach mixture. And every hour I'd go reactivate that lightener and let it beat the crap out of it, you know? Or mm -hmm. I would just dump it in a bowl of hair color. I'd get like a Tupperware and just waste five, six, ten ounces of hair color and just let it sit in there and soak in real good. You know, and then right. the next and let it dry overnight again. And then the next day I'd go in and tone it down to whatever I want, you know, um, and then let it air dry for three days. But that's like a whole week process. Realistically, what happens? We order hair. We don't open it till an hour before the client's coming in or until the client's, you know, walking in through the door. And then we realize, whoops, we done goofed. <laughs> this ain't the right color, you know. Get here tomorrow. <laughs> right? So, and then the client's like, oh, I have this thing to go to. That's why I did it today. And I'm like, that's why I made the appointment today. I need my hair done right now. And you're like, all right, well, everybody's scrambling to get it done. You pop the hair extensions into the client's hair and then you run them back to the station. You start coloring their hair and you start doing a prayer and it comes out to whatever it comes out to be. Well, you, I think you brought up a good point. I, I, you kind of glazed over it, but I think it'd be a great point to kind of, I mean, unless you got more topics, but it'd be a great point to bring up before we end. The, the more, uh, I don't know, predictable thing to do in this because let's think about it from the start to the end. Why are we coloring hair extensions to match the client's hair? So just color the client's hair or bleach the client's hair instead. So I was just thinking, like you put the extent, like you said, oh crap, I forgot to order the hair. You overnight it for six to eight thirty a.m. the early a.m. delivery. I've got to the salon at ten to six a few times in the morning. Slept on the couch on the front. Put a sign on the door to put a UPS man. Please knock. Bang I'm on the door, on man. The sofa. <laughs> Right, because I need this hair at 10 a.m. and I forgot to get it, so I overnighted it, and I'm I'm sleeping on the couch from 6 to 8:30. Don't need to be to work till 9 or 10, and uh, maybe I'm reading a book or watching YouTube, but I'm afraid I'm gonna fall asleep. And 
and he knocks on the door, you know, and he gives me the hair, and now I it's the wrong color, <laughs> or it's a little off. And I'm like, ah. so yeah, it's better to put that hair in, in my opinion. Maybe you got some leftover hair around the salon where you can salt and pepper in some highlights or low lights in that top row. And that's something to think about. I always, I, placement's one of my favorite things to talk about because in placement, you can solve a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. And it, on that top row of extensions is most important. So if you need a different color, that's where it should be. Putting it way down low where everything's covering it does not, does not change the color much. It's just for dimension and depth and seeing it underneath, maybe in a ponytail. But if that top row of color needs to be changed a little, Maybe you have some extra pieces around the salon. Maybe you got smart enough to always order a few different colors like we talked about in a recent video. And so <clears throat> you do that or you don't. And so the next step, and we're kind of talking about last second color situations here. So that last step, you put the extensions in. And a lot of times you guys, I made this mistake too. We've matched the color close to the root. So now we're putting it in and those ends are just a little fried and they're not matching. They're a little frizzle fried bleached faded and they're laying over the top of the extensions and they're going boom a little lighter brown over this dark brown so what do we do sometimes we cut them off <laughs> that's my answer cutting. to everything i cut everything off yeah. <laughs> but maybe you just come in and you look over it and you do a little paint job maybe you just brush some strokes of a, a low light in there Maybe you pick up and foil just the ends of the client's color and just color the ends and kind of feather edge it in. Maybe you color everything, just tone more so, just kind of pull it all together. But you can kind of pull it all together with some color after the extensions are in. The pain in the butt after this, though, is you're going to wash all of that hair and wetting a big full head of hair extensions, woo, then blow drying adds an hour or so to your service. So... If you hold it, so think about all that. That's all the ways I've done it before. Then I got the hair and I put it up there. And I'm like, oh, those ends are going to need to be colored a little. So let's think smart. Maybe we adjust the tone or color of the client's hair before we put the extensions in. Because I can wash and dry her hair fast and sloppy a lot easier than a full head of extensions. So fix her hair before you put the extensions in, even if you're in a rush. Because if you're thinking ahead, it's going to be a lot faster that way. To, to fix her hair before the if last the thing I high, got is you got? when, when you're coloring extensions. Okay. So now you've colored them. You've done what you need to do. Right. Right. People wait for the hair to dry, but they don't wait for the bonding part of the extensions to dry. So whether you're using a weft, whether you're using a K tip, a keratin bond, a, a plastic bond, a, a loop, an eye tip, whatever you're using that, area where the hair is bonded to mm -hmm. needs a, extra secure. time yeah to air dry out uh because on on wefts and stuff usually it's some kind of fabric or or some kind of uh stitching or you know some kind of material on adhesives obviously tape in extensions that's an adhesive that's some kind of glue or some kind of resin and then on on keratin bonds you know, that's protein and that's going to absorb that moisture. And when, and if you go to, to do any of these while there's still that moisture trapped in there, it's, it's not going to attach properly. It needs well. approximately 24 to 48 hours to completely dry out, depending on the type of bonding that's a good point. Was was used right. on that hair extension. So it's better not to wet the hair within the first day or two of putting extensions in, no matter what technique you're using. That's another reason why we always say yeah. after Same it's applied, with don't wet them. Yeah. Same thing with hair replacement. The adhesives we're using on the top of the scalp need a good. Uh, actually, most of the rec manufacturers recommend seventy-two hours for for full drying or adhesion of what the do product. they know they just make the stuff we're hairdressers okay <laughs> we don't have time <laughs> i have so much more to do today i am done for today no this that covers fun. that covers all the points that i can think of off the top you know off off my head with all my notes and everything uh yeah, if good. if i missed anything let me know i know this is a lot to unpack so if anybody needs any clarification on stuff because there's some stuff that I didn't skip, but I kind of glazed through it. I didn't go deep dive into it. Comments, comments. Yeah. We Hit love us up, let us know, and, and we'll reply. You know, you'll let me know that people commented, and then I'll come on and, and reply. Yes. Yes. <laughs>
We'll catch you all next week.